So um, it's been really lovely um, being together for the last few days and of course having the pleasure to present on the last day. Um, I would like to use this opportunity um, not just to pr talk about some of my own work but also to discuss some of the issues that have arisen in the past few days. So nonetheless I will begin uh, the presentation talking a bit about where I come from to situate um, some of my thinking and perhaps some of our um, discussions later and then I will talk about um, an art project I've been working on um, the Institute of Care and um, then I would actually like to open things up to to have a more of a discussion together but let's start with origin stories because this is how we situate, um, well, at least situate where I am. So this whole care thing is really interesting. I don't actually come from a background of care. I mean, of course, I like to think I'm a caring person and I try to help people around me and do things, but, but care has, wasn't a really um, significant topic in my work um, until 2020. Um, and to go back a little bit in the origin story, um, since 2017, um, I have, I've, I've been focusing a lot on political economy issues because money underlies so many of the questions that come up in contemporary art. So I, I basically spent uh, I, I, sorry, I can't do maths right now, but basically I've spent so many years <laughs> looking at um, political economy issues um, ranging from real estate, financialization of real estate and housing, uh, green energy um, investments in the African continent and how it creates long-term structures of debt. And in 2020, um, I got really interested in the topic of pensions. So why are pensions important? I know many of us might even have given up on the idea of retiring at this point, but it's really important to talk about pensions and to think about it. Um, first of all, because they're one of the key conceptual bases for, for a welfare system, because it's about um, you know, giving money but the money is, uh, is to provide some sort of well-being um, in old age or, or just for people who are, not, who are no longer in waged work. So it forces us to think about the economy beyond immediate transactional values. Um, so, so from a conceptual perspective, it, that's really important, um, especially if we're talking about things like care and non-monetized care. Um, and then the scale of pensions, they are huge. Um, th there are historians who say that without pension funds, we would not know the capitalism we have today. Um, and, and it's huge because we all pay into it with the idea that somehow it will provide security in old age, but it's not really. Right? Look around us, um, you know, most elderly people are not you know, enjoying a particularly high quality of life. <clears throat> and it's also important to see how it acts within society. Um, so beyond the, the, the risk, because um, these, the, the, uh, our, our payment contributions often get invested into um, stock markets, or, but not necessarily just stocks, startups, um, bonds, um, basically anything ge that generates some sort of an income. Beyond, beyond the risk is that the low risk investments are precisely the things that are key to our, well, our long-term steady well-being, housing, energy, and even today, long-term care. Um, and, 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 the, and, and I think uh, just a couple of months ago in Germany, there was an announcement of, um, you know what, we want to link pension payments to the stock market, you know, the, the profits from stock markets will, will, will pay for future pension payments. 
The problem is then this creates a stake um, of our well-being, of our collective well-being in old age into the stock market. And, and you know, things that are profitable are not necessarily good practices, right? So for example, Amazon might be a profitable company, but it, it's profitable precisely because it, ex it, it exploits workers, it exploits us, right? And it damages the environment and so on. But when this incredible emotional stake is put in, because a lot of people actually care about the security in old age, it becomes much harder to change these practices. Um, and then, you know, there's the argument that, okay, well, you know, we can do sustainable investments, but actually if you look like really into the details of what a sustainable investment is, at present time it's very poorly defined. So, for example, from in, in the energy perspective, gas can be considered, you know, relatively clean. But also, for example, in terms of governance, right, uh, these ESG, uh, environmental social governance ratings, um, a good governance rating can come, you know, in terms of worker, you know, real worker representation where, you know, workers have a say in the working environments and so on. Or it can simply come from a lack of lawsuits against the company. But you can have a lack of lawsuits against the company by doing union busting activities or, or basically um, entrenching, uh, basically um, entrenching against worker organization. So, you know, so, so it's, a, it's a tricky thing. But perhaps uh, on the topic of care, what is more important is that it, it sacrifices our present well-being. These, these stakes sacrifices our present well-being for a promise of the future that may or may not materialize. And in, in terms of, and, and, and the, the, perhaps the deeper and sharper issue that, that comes up in this discourse is that um, you know people say okay well but we can make money and you know we can provide the care we need we import workers and so on but the fact is okay in terms of care in terms of old age um, the physical care we need in old age is not just purely physical there's an emotional aspect as well um, especially when we look at uh, things like dementia Alzheimer Parkinson's and so on so you know this this is something that um, will have uh, will, will have limit will see limited benefits from technological development. So human labor is actually really important. And so, um, and and talking about a bit of about um, staking, um, um, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, security um, and and care itself um, on the topic of care. Um, so a lot, of priv a lot of care homes have been privatized and they are actually marketed by private investment firms as a really great investment class because the, um, the um, barrier to market entry is lower. Basically it's cheaper to get into than real estate because real estate is sort of much more limited. There's only so much land and you know, so on. But because we have an aging population and because by the time you enter a care home, you are very unlikely to leave until you die, you are basically guaranteed a steady stream of income. And depending on which country you are in, for example in Germany, a lot of this, um, these care homes are subsidized. So basically we're looking at a drain of money um, into, into private profit and profit can even be raised because once you have a building and once you have the furniture, what you do is you just basically you suppress your labor value. So, um, so then you know, so people uh, care workers enter into uh, more precar precarious working conditions and so on, and the quality of care um, people receive actually decreases. So, this is what I was thinking about in 2020. Um, so I was thinking, okay, well, you know, being an artist, you know, how can I imagine a better world? Perhaps a bit naively, right? And um, so I, I've been interested in community currencies for a while. Um, um, 
not necessarily it can be as a way of um, actually being a real thing. Um, and what you see here is actually designed to be viable. But mostly I think of it as a way to think about socio-political relationships. So this scheme basically is here. You start off at the Red Block Institute of Care. You have, you know, you combine all sorts of uh, needs of care. Basically, you create an administration arm that issues a community currency. And what happens is that um, you use this community currency to make your pension payments. And because uh, the idea is that, you know, if, if there is organized care, then we can guarantee that people get care in their old age. And then you can also, because, because everyone needs to pay pension payments, uh, you can use it to develop other things beyond care itself. So blah, blah. How do we actually um, think about this on, uh, with other people? Right? Um, the problem is most people think of economics, most people think of welfare as a super complicated topics, topic only for mathematicians. So um, this was a project I did at, um, in Helsinki um, as part of an EMAP uh, residency. And then at the end of the residency, um, the MCULT, the host was like, okay, so how, how can we think about, how can we you know, sort of move towards actually you know, developing something like this? So we decided, okay, so because things are so difficult to talk about, let's, let's use the method of role-playing games um, to get people to, to, to talk about their experience of care, but also to, to understand the relationships, uh, how relationships can be formed. So, so this is the project of the Institute of Care. Um, don't worry, there's no video. This is just a still from the video. Um, and <clears throat> um, so we've been using role-playing games uh, to think about care. Uh, we haven't been able to meet particularly frequently. Um, and I'll get back into that a little. Um, but <clears throat> what was really interesting um, was that uh, during the second or third round, actually, of our role-playing games, um, shit just fell apart. Um, you know, like all the nice things that were supposed to happen and the good feelings, people were just feeling... Um, we, we, we made some, in hindsight, we, we, we made some stupid mistakes in our game design. Um, we, we made it much more open than it should have been. And there were lots of variable factors where we felt like we, we sort of unconsciously, um, okay, so, so this game was actually um, happening at a senior care home, and we were working and talking uh, with seniors and elderly citizens, uh, elderly citizens um, as well as care workers. And we were, and just when we were um, scheduled to go on, uh, care workers in Helsinki were going on strike. And somehow, the whole si in, in that whole situation and in this kind of role-playing situation, we somehow unconsciously felt, fell into, into sort of, okay, how can we provide innovative care? Like, how can we use art to provide care for these people? And because we made the mistake of making the game much more open so that other people could walk in, which is like, a, in hindsight, a really big no-no in game design, but we weren't thinking properly, whatever. Um, um, it, it created a pressure and it, people were just not feeling confident. And, you know, it was just like, um, so we So the game broke and we're like, okay, then we just got down to this, and it was like, okay, why are we here? Like, we, elderly citizens in Finland, you know, which to me was before like, oh, it's a super rich country, it's a super happy place, right? Um, let's talk with them, but when you speak with them, 
um, you find out actually um, that they, they actually have a real shortage of professional caregivers. A lot of the elderly citizens who, who took part in these events, they end up performing um, caregiving duties beyond, well, I mean, not beyond, but, but they, they are also at the limit of providing care for their loved ones. Um, for example, there was a man whose wife has dementia, and it's a lot of both physical and emotional stress. I mean, these people are, are not young. They have their own uh, frailties as well. Um, so, so, you know, we, we were talking about that. And then we were saying, okay, the real reason why we're here is we want greater care work. We want, we want to support care work. How do we do this? So, um, so at this point, we, we forgot about the art. We were just like, okay. So I gave a quick crash course on um, how EU, um, EU uh, European Central Bank uh, functions, uh, as much as you can do a crash course on central banking in 10 minutes. Um, and, we, and we talked about uh, competition laws that um, undermine um, previous uh, publicly funded care homes um, and how this opens the space for privatized care. And at this point, the participants really picked up again. They, they, because they feel this is okay. Now we understand why we're here. Now we get down to the main deal, right? I mean, oh, by the way, oh, we, we were dressed up as, I know it's not obvious, but we were dressed up as alpacas, this little white thing you see everyone um, on. And uh, so, you know, that was the, everyone was really keen on wearing this symbolic alpaca outfit. Like this was the one thing they wanted, but, but we had actually at this point forgotten about art. We were just like, okay, what do we want? We want solidarity with care workers. Um, you know, there, there are responsibilities between generations. Um, and this is important because a lot of the time um, when we speak with um, elderly citizens, um, the discourse really gets beyond, oh, look at those poor old people we deserve. We worked hard all our lives. You know, we deserve a good retirement. We are so screwed right now. This is not fair. And that is, of course, true. And, and that is actually right. And that's true. But then, the, you know, we, we started looking at, you know, um, how also the present, the present active labor force, present workers are also screwed. And, and sort of thinking about solidarity that way. Um, and, and so in this picture, you can see we made some posters talking about care for everyone, uh, intergenerational uh, responsibilities, and so on. And we made a little video um, where seniors were talking about not everyone has a safe home to go to, um, not everyone um, has family that can take care of them. We need professional care and it should be a right. So this has now developed into a board game uh, where we uh, create, um, where, where we present situations, um, where we try to speak with each other more about what care means and also to understand different interests between sectors. Um, <clears throat> so it, it, it's quite interesting in this regard because what, I thought was kind of always obvious was actually not obvious. Um, so some senior citizens, you know, they, they, we are all aware of this environmental crisis we are in. And, you know, um, so, you know, in, in this board, board game, we're like saying, you know, we, we play different characters and so on. Um, and then it's like, we're talking about environmental care and what we can do. And one elderly citizen says, well, we need to teach children how to not waste so much. But actually, it is actually the children who, who are really raising um, the issue on environmental care. 
So, you know, actually a lot of these basic things that I had taken for granted that everyone's on the same page. No, not everyone is, I mean, you know, we might have similar values, but actually there is a lot of understanding um, that is missing. And so we're trying to um, talk about, you know, using, using a board game method instead of role playing game to actually just create more of these conversations. <clears throat> so, that's enough about this project. <laughs> um, because um, a lot of, uh, because one of the, perhaps the biggest challenge of all this good stuff in art is that, you know, the idea of sustainability of art projects keeps coming up, you know, we're often, limited by this, um, you know, we have sort of punctuated events where we do things. But the question is, what is our responsibility to the communities we work with when, when we work in this art stuff, right? You know, we can show up every few months and we can do nice things together, but in between there, we, we don't have the resources um, to, to actually support this energy. Right, we have a lot of good energy after each game, but like, but then you know, we all need to go back to our lives, um, to you know, our, our lives outside of art, to do whatever you know, to take care of our friends and family, or to actually just make money and pay rent. You know, we 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 need to do these things. So then, almost every game, it, it almost feels a bit like we are starting from square one all over again, and. So maybe I would like to use the rest of this time because this, 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 this kind of issue I'm talking about has come up in all the presentations so far. This sustainability of art um, uh, issue um, and it also comes up a lot in our um, sort of um, non in informal conversations. So perhaps what I'm proposing is um, since so many of our projects, um, are, so many of our challenges have to, have to do with a lack of structures, lack of, or, or funding structures um, that, that sort of ask us to do certain deliverables. Um, maybe I would like to ask um, how do we care for the cultural sector for cultural collectives. Because actually it's really hard to care for others when we are, we, we, we are in this framework of these very short term projects. Even, even if it's a two year project, it's, it's very short term when you, th when you put this into the context of other people's lives. So in this way, I would like to open the questions of how do we take care of the cultural collective so we are, we, we are no longer in this position of these very short-term things that we ourselves are unhappy with and to consider, well, how, what is the value of art and how, how does art relate to society and what, what is the future of cultural collectives but also other forms of collective so that we can sort of begin to reshape um, um, the, the settings we, we cultural and artistic practitioners are engaged in. So this is where it becomes a conversation. Um, please feel free to comment. It doesn't need to be a particularly articulate comment or question, but some of your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs>